Right as the world's most powerful particle collider began operating at full power, researchers at the physics lab announced they had found three new exotic particles that could reveal more about the force-binding subatomic matter. What are these strange particles? What do they mean for our picture of the universe? In this video, we break down the findings on these exotic particles recently announced by scientists at CERN. Now, with significant upgrades, it is primed to reveal new findings, detecting ghost particles called neutrinos for the very first time inside the world's most powerful particle accelerator. These ghost particles are so strange that trillions of them are passing through your body every single second. Understanding neutrinos could unlock answers to some of the biggest questions in physics, like what dark matter really is, and why the universe exists at all. Today I'm breaking down exactly what this discovery means. Imagine a particle so small and so unwilling to interact with anything that it can pass through a light year of solid lead without even slowing down. That's a neutrino. Let me put this into perspective. Right now, as you're watching this video, approximately 100 trillion neutrinos are passing through your body every single second. You don't feel them. They don't harm you. In fact, neutrinos pass through the entire planet Earth with the same ease that light passes through a perfectly clear window. So what exactly are neutrinos? They're subatomic particles with no electrical charge, which is why they're called neutral particles, or neutrinos. Unlike electrons or protons that interact with electromagnetic forces, neutrinos are completely neutral. They also have almost no mass. Scientists at the Karlsruhe Tritium Neutrino Experiment in Germany determined that neutrinos have a maximum mass of just 0.8 electron volts. To give you a sense of scale, that's approximately 10,000 times lighter than an electron, which is already incredibly tiny. We're talking about a mass of roughly 1.4 times 10 to the negative 36th kilograms, but here's what makes neutrinos truly fascinating. They only interact through two of the four fundamental forces in nature. They completely ignore the electromagnetic force and the strong nuclear force that holds atomic nuclei together. The only forces they respond to are gravity. This is precisely why they're so difficult to detect. Now you might be wondering, if neutrinos barely interact with anything, why should we care about them? Neutrinos are the most abundant particles with mass in the entire universe. Physicists estimate that neutrinos outnumber protons by a ratio of 1 billion to 1. They were created in enormous quantities during the Big Bang, and they're still being produced today in massive numbers. Stars like our Sun generate neutrinos through nuclear fusion. Supernovas exploding across the galaxy release tremendous bursts of neutrinos. Even radioactive decay here on Earth produces them. The reason scientists are so obsessed with studying neutrinos is because they carry pristine information about the universe. Think about it this way. When light travels through space, it can be absorbed, scattered, or distorted by dust, gas, and magnetic fields. But neutrinos? They just sail right through everything unchanged. This means a neutrino that reaches Earth from a distant supernova carries the exact same information it had when it left that exploding star millions of years ago. Now here's where neutrinos get even stranger. They don't just come in one type. Neutrinos exist in three different varieties that scientists call flavors. There's the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Each flavor is associated with a corresponding charged particle, the electron, the muon, and the tau particle. But the truly bizarre thing about neutrinos is that they don't stay in one flavor. As a neutrino travels through space, it oscillates between these three flavors in a quantum mechanical dance. A neutrino that starts out as an electron neutrino might transform into a muon neutrino, then into a tau neutrino, and back again, constantly shifting its identity as it moves. This flavor oscillation actually solved one of the biggest mysteries in physics, known as the solar neutrino problem. Back in the 1960s and 70s, Scientists built detectors to measure neutrinos coming from the sun. They knew from nuclear physics calculations exactly how many neutrinos the sun should be producing through its fusion reactions, so they set up experiments to count them. But there was a massive problem. The detectors were only finding about one-third of the expected neutrinos. This was deeply troubling. Either our understanding of how the sun works was completely wrong, or something strange was happening to the neutrinos on their journey from the sun to earth. 
Scientists debated this mystery for decades. The solution turned out to be neutrino oscillation. The early detectors were only designed to detect electron neutrinos, which is the type produced by the Sun's fusion reactions. But during the eight-minute journey from the Sun to Earth, many of those electron neutrinos were transforming into muon neutrinos and tau neutrinos. The detectors were missing two-thirds of the neutrinos simply because they had changed flavors. When scientists finally built detectors capable of detecting all three neutrino flavors, they found the missing neutrinos. The total number matched the predictions perfectly. This discovery was so important that it earned the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2015. But neutrino oscillation created a new puzzle. According to quantum mechanics, particles can only oscillate between different states if those states have different masses. This means the three neutrino flavors must have slightly different masses, but the standard model of particle physics originally predicted that neutrinos should be completely massless. The fact that neutrinos have mass, even though it's incredibly small, proves that the standard model is incomplete. There's new physics beyond what we currently understand, and neutrinos are pointing us toward it. This is why scientists are so eager to study neutrinos in every possible way. Each new method of detecting and measuring them brings us closer to understanding what lies beyond our current theories. And that brings us to the incredible breakthrough at the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. It's a circular tunnel 27 kilometers in circumference buried 100 meters underground on the border between France and Switzerland. Inside this massive ring, protons are accelerated to 99.9999% the speed of light, before being smashed together with tremendous energy. These collisions recreate conditions that haven't existed naturally since microseconds after the Big Bang. The LHC is famous for discovering the Higgs boson in 2012, which was the last missing piece of the standard model. Since then it has discovered approximately 60 previously unknown hadrons, which are composite particles made of quarks. But detecting neutrinos inside the LHC, that was considered nearly impossible. Here's why it's so challenging. When protons collide in the LHC, they produce an enormous spray of particles flying in all directions. Among these particles are neutrinos, but they immediately zip away at nearly the speed of light, without interacting with any of the detector equipment. It's like trying to photograph invisible ghosts that move faster than your camera's shutter speed. Traditional particle detectors at the LHC work by measuring how particles interact with layers of sensing material, but neutrinos just pass straight through without leaving a trace. Scientists knew neutrinos were being produced in the LHC collisions, the physics predicted it, but actually detecting them required an entirely new approach. This is where the FACER experiment comes in. FACER stands for Forward Search Experiment and it represents a completely innovative strategy for catching neutrinos. The FACER team realized something crucial. While neutrinos produced in the collisions scatter in all directions, there's a specific location where neutrino density would be highest, directly in line with the beam direction. 480 meters away from the collision point, neutrinos would be concentrated in a narrow cone. If you placed a detector in exactly the right spot, you might actually catch some of them but location alone wasn't enough. The detector itself needed to be revolutionary. The team developed something called Facer New, specifically designed to detect the incredibly rare interactions of neutrinos. Here's how it works. Facer New consists of alternating layers of two different materials. The first material is dense metal plates made of lead and tungsten. These are some of the heaviest elements available, packed with atomic nuclei. When a neutrino passes through this dense material, there's a tiny probability it will actually collide with one of those nuclei. When this rare collision happens, it produces other particles as byproducts, particles that can be detected. The second material is what scientists call emulsion. This works similarly to old-fashioned photographic film. When charged particles pass through the emulsion, they leave behind microscopic tracks, like footprints in snow. These tracks can be developed and examined under powerful microscopes. So here's the complete process. Neutrinos stream through the Pfizer new detector. Most pass straight through without interacting. But occasionally one neutrino will strike a nucleus in the metal plates. This collision produces secondary particles, like muons, or electrons. These secondary particles then travel through the emulsion layers, leaving behind visible tracks. Scientists develop the emulsion and analyze the patterns of tracks to determine what kind of particle created them. By studying the characteristics of these tracks, the angle they travel, their length, and their pattern, physicists can work backwards to determine that a neutrino caused the interaction. 
They can even distinguish between the three different neutrino flavors based on the specific particles produced in the collision. The results were extraordinary. The Pfizer collaboration successfully detected neutrino interactions for the first time ever inside a particle accelerator. This wasn't just one or two events. They recorded multiple clear neutrino signatures, proving that their detection method works. This achievement is monumental for several reasons. First, it confirms that scientists can now study neutrinos produced in particle accelerators with unprecedented precision. Second, the neutrinos created in the LHC have much higher energies than neutrinos from most other sources. Studying these high-energy neutrinos could reveal new physics that only appears at extreme energy scales. Third, this detection method opens the door to distinguishing between neutrinos and antineutrinos, which are the antimatter counterparts of neutrinos. The FACER team isn't stopping here. They're already working on a larger, more sensitive version of their detector. This upgraded version will be able to detect many more neutrino interactions and gather detailed statistics about how neutrinos behave at these incredible energies. Every additional neutrino they detect brings us closer to answering fundamental questions about the universe. Did you enjoy this video? Don't forget to hit the notification bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. So why does detecting neutrinos at the LHC matter so much? What can we learn from these ghost particles that we couldn't learn before? The implications are profound and far-reaching. First, this opens an entirely new experimental window for studying neutrinos. Before this breakthrough, scientists studied neutrinos from natural sources like the sun, cosmic rays, supernovas, and nuclear reactors. Each source provides neutrinos with different energy ranges and characteristics. Now with the ability to detect neutrinos at the LHC, physicists can study artificially produced neutrinos with precisely controlled energies and conditions. This level of experimental control is invaluable for testing theoretical predictions. Second, the high-energy neutrinos produced at the LHC might reveal physics beyond the standard model. Our current theories work incredibly well at the energies we've tested so far, but many physicists believe new phenomena will appear at higher energies. Neutrinos are particularly interesting because they already show us that the standard model is incomplete through their unexpected mass. Studying them at LHC energies might reveal additional surprises, like new types of neutrino interactions or even hints of extra dimensions of space. Third, this research could help solve the mystery of dark matter. Dark matter is the invisible substance that makes up approximately 85% of all matter in the universe. We know it exists because of its gravitational effects on galaxies and galaxy clusters, but we have no idea what it's made of. For years, scientists wondered if neutrinos could be dark matter. After all, they're abundant, nearly invisible, and barely interact with ordinary matter. However, there's a problem. Even with countless neutrinos filling the universe, the three known types don't have enough mass to account for all the dark matter we observe. Their maximum combined mass of 0.8 electron volts is simply too small. But what if there are additional types of neutrinos we haven't discovered yet? Some theories predict the existence of sterile neutrinos, hypothetical particles that don't interact through any force except gravity. If sterile neutrinos exist and have more mass than ordinary neutrinos, they could potentially explain dark matter. The LHC neutrino detection capability gives scientists a new tool to search for these sterile neutrinos. By carefully measuring the properties of neutrino interactions at high energies, physicists might find evidence of these hidden particles. Even if sterile neutrinos aren't the answer to dark matter, understanding neutrinos better will help us narrow down what dark matter could be. Fourth, this research connects to one of the deepest mysteries in cosmology. Why does the universe exist at all? According to physics, the Big Bang should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter. When matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate each other in a burst of energy. So the universe should have destroyed itself almost immediately, leaving nothing but radiation. Yet here we are, in a universe made almost entirely of matter with very little antimatter. Something must have caused a slight imbalance, creating just a tiny bit more matter than antimatter. That excess matter is everything we see today. All the stars, planets and galaxies. Neutrinos might be the key to understanding this asymmetry. Scientists are investigating whether neutrinos and antineutrinos behave slightly differently in ways that could have tipped the balance in favor of matter. The ability to study both neutrinos and antineutrinos at the LHC brings us closer to testing these ideas. 
Finally, every new detection method and every new piece of data about neutrinos brings us closer to a more complete theory of physics. The standard model has been incredibly successful, but we know it's not the final answer. It doesn't include gravity. It doesn't explain dark matter or dark energy. It doesn't tell us why neutrinos have mass or why there are exactly three generations of particles. Somewhere beyond the standard model lies a more fundamental theory that unifies all the forces and explains all the particles. Neutrinos are one of our best guides toward that ultimate theory. The detection of neutrinos at the Large Hadron Collider represents a genuine breakthrough in particle physics. Scientists have successfully caught ghost particles that pass through entire planets without slowing down, using an innovative detector placed in exactly the right location with precisely the right technology. This achievement opens a new chapter in neutrino research, giving physicists the ability to study these mysterious particles at energies never before possible. We've explored what makes neutrinos so strange, how they oscillate between three different flavors, why the Facer experiment succeeded where others couldn't, and what this means for the future of physics. From potentially explaining dark matter to understanding why the universe exists, neutrinos hold clues to some of the biggest questions in science. The Facer collaboration is already building larger, more sensitive detectors to capture even more neutrino interactions. With each ghost particle they catch, we move one step closer to understanding the fundamental nature of reality itself. What aspect of neutrino physics fascinates you most? Are you more intrigued by their ghost-like properties, their potential connection to dark matter, or their role in the matter-antimatter asymmetry? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this deep dive into cutting-edge physics valuable, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos exploring the mysteries of the universe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for being with us. Leave a comment, like to show your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button for more exciting videos. See you next time.